The Dunning-Kruger effect is normally associated with dumb people overestimating their actual understanding, but that is not what the effect is about. It is actually about poor performers, so smart people as well, overestimating their performance. The original 1999 paper proposed that those with limited knowledge in a domain suffer a dual burden. Not only do they reach mistaken conclusions and make regrettable errors, but their incompetence robs them of the ability to realise it. Since that paper, there have been some questions about the statistical analysis and the findings in general, which this paper looked to explore. In the abstract, they mentioned they did multiple studies that challenged the alternative accounts that have been proposed to explain why poor performers hold such positive impressions of their performance. The background sections explained that the effect is thought to be due to our bias, where we claim to be above average, which is statistically impossible. Most of us can't be above average because average is where most people are. Regression to the mean is an account for the effect that I don't fully grasp as I'm not a statistician, but here is my understanding. If you take your temperature every day and are ill for one or two days, the numbers go up, but they will eventually fall or regress back to the mean. This fluctuation in number is claimed to be due to unreliable measures due to measurement errors. In addition, there is an argument that the perception of task difficulty accounts for the effect, which is also explored in this paper. Study 1 had students do a class exam, judging how well they had done immediately after it relative to other students, and guess their raw exam score. To consider the regression account, they used reliability estimates and recalculated what the slope would be. Again, I'm unsure about how they worked this out, that is part of my research I need to brush up on uh, in the stats. But what they found replicated what the 1999 paper originally found, showing poor performers grossly overestimating their performance. When we look at the results in the graph, you can see the actual performance going up from left to right, and the perceived performance test and mastery scores doing a more gradual incline, starting much higher on the left of the graph, the gap, on the left side of the graph is the Dunning-Kruger effect, and the gap on the right side of the graph is the false consensus effect. Study 2 looked to replicate study 1, but in a different setting, an arguably more ecologically valid setting, so something more real life. Participants in a debate tournament were not told the results of the debates, so they had no feedback of how well they were doing. The judges also scored each individual in the debate, so two teams of two meant four participants were scored and on a scale from 1 to 30. This meant for the research, they could ask participants for estimates of how well they thought they had done. Did they win? What was their personal rank? And what were the judges' scores? As you can see by the results in the graph, irrespective of the score picked, those in the left side of the graph, the bottom performers, overestimated their performance for mastery estimates, test performance estimates, and raw score estimates. Again, accounting for error stemming from measurement unreliability, poor performers grossly overestimated their performance but they didn't see a consistent pattern with top performers. Now, some points about these results were that motivation might not be there for poor performers to do well, which could be the reason for the difference. Things like money or accountability should be tested. So in study three, they got participants from a trap and skeet competition for a $5 payment, most owning firearms and most having had safety instruction about how to use them. They were given a 10 item multiple choice test of gun safety, which you would hope they would all do well on. After choosing the best of four possible responses, each participant gave a confidence score from 25% of just guessing to 100% knowing they got the right answer. In addition, before they started, some were randomly assigned as an incentive group, gaining the opportunity to earn $10 instead of five if their ratings of confidence in each response averaged within 5% of their actual score. They were also asked for a percentile score from 1 to 100 and how well they think their peers did, similar to the previous studies. Unsurprisingly for some, poor performers still overestimated their performance. When looking at the results, something that stuck out to me was that the incentive group on the left side, so bottom side, were actually more wrong. So they overestimated their ability even more. And on the right side, the top performers, the incentive group was again more wrong. So maybe the incentive increases the effect rather than the pr proposed uh, decreasing effect. Some critics may argue a $5 increase is not enough to motivate someone, so in study 4, they raised it to $100 if they were accurate on their performance. 
Similar to study three, participants indicated their confidence, but this time was from 20% to 100%. They were also told that if they were within 5%, they could leave with $30. But as predicted, the accuracy didn't increase, results showing a similar trend to the 1999 paper, but the incentive didn't seem to increase the effect this time. In study five, they moved away from financial incentives towards social incentives. There were two groups, one being told that the answers they gave would need to be rationalized to a supervising professor, adding some accountability to their answers. And the control group didn't know they had an interview, so no added accountability for their answers. Again, the confidence was measured from 20% to 100%. And again, strong social incentive of accountability did not lead to greater accuracy. The results again showing the incentive might be increasing the effect, rather than decreasing it. So these studies show there is an inaccuracy of estimating, but why? The idea is that bottom performers believe they are getting lots of correct answers, so they think they are doing relatively well. So they misjudge their own ability. But the top performers are fairly accurate with judging their own ability, but not their peers. In theory then, if misperceptions of peer results were corrected, top performers would be accurate and therefore more confident but bottom performers would still struggle because their own performance misjudgments wouldn't be changed. They created this scenario using counterfactual regression analysis, which is another part of stats I need to understand better, but essentially they made a statistical guess as to what might have happened. What they found is that when bottom performers were told their real score, they would be more accurate with their percentile estimates, but correcting errors about others actually made them less accurate, which is what was expected. So their estimates are flawed because of misconceptions about their own performance rather than misconceptions about the performance of others. And as predicted, top performers gave optimistic estimates of their peers, thinking they would do better than they did. But we don't have an answer book with us or objective metrics about how knowledgeable you are or someone else is. So even though the original findings were supported, what do we do about it? A comment that was raised around feedback reminded me of a previously reviewed paper that I've gone over, which was the Dunning-Kruger effect in sports coaching, which suggests that the external feedback can make the self-estimates worse if feedback is not an accurate performance measure. So the suggestion in this paper is to encourage self-insight, reflection, introspection, and encourage learning. I would imagine self-directed learning, following curiosity, and engaging in lateral reading for different viewpoints is what they are alluding to. The authors briefly mention work on malleable intelligence and the notion of a growth mindset and the characteristics that go along with that. So again, the idea of lifelong learning. Leaving me with some questions about stats and how they work, a general feeling that meta-ignorance is a psychological bias and not an artifact of stats which we should look to challenge and we need to laterally read, continually learn and communicate with others that may know what we don't. So I encourage you to share your thoughts in the comment section below.